Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message Series. Encouraging messages from the heart of God to you, His child, to encourage you in your daily life and to provide the inspiration you need and the tools you need and resources to strengthen you as you cope with life's challenges. Today, we're going to talk about coping with some of life's challenges and who you are in Christ and what you are to others through Christ. God says in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, that you are a letter from Christ, not written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of a human heart fulfilling the prophecy that he made in Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-three, which alludes to when Moses went up to Mount Sinai and he received the tablets on the mountain. And there he was given two tablets of stone written on the front and on the back that were the law and the commandments, which were written by the very finger of God. That's Exodus thirty-one eighteen, And it was to teach the people, he says, in Exodus twenty four twelve. But just as God wrote with his finger on the tablets front and back, so now God has written with his finger in your heart his law. For he says in Hebrews eight, eight through twelve and ten, sixteen and seventeen. And then again in Jeremiah 31, 34, he says, I will put my laws within you, and on your hearts I will write them. By the Holy Spirit he is saying, I am God, you are my child. You know me and you recognize me. You understand me and you're acquainted with me, who forgives your inequities, and I seriously remember your sins no more. For God has imprinted his laws upon your mind and upon their innermost thoughts and understanding and engraved them upon your heart. And he is your God and your father and you are his child. And he is fulfilling his word in you, to you, and through you. And because you really are his child, God has sent his Holy Spirit of his son into your heart crying, Abba, Father, Father, Galatians 4, 6. Therefore, you're no longer a slave to sin and the law of sin and death, but you're a child of God, a child of the Most High. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has now set you free from the law of sin and death, and you walk in the freedom in which Christ has bought for you, the Spirit of the living God himself, living in you and through you, testifies together with your own spirit, assuring you that you are the child of God. Romans 8.16 So I tell you, most assuredly, you are a letter from Christ because you are a child of God. The Holy Spirit himself dwells in you and he equips and he empowers you to go far over and above all that you dare ask or think infinitely beyond what you can even imagine further than your highest prayers desires and thoughts and hopes and dreams further than you could even possibly think of ever going on your own in your own strength and your ability for it's by the action of God's power that's at work within you which is enabling you to carry out his purposes and desires by doing his works through his power that is in you. You see, you don't need to be intimidated when God presents you with challenging circumstances and tough times. He expects you to turn to him. The problem is, is we try to work things out in our own abilities and our own talents and our own thoughts forgetting that we're not to lean on to our own understanding, but we're to acknowledge that God is at work within us, and we are to praise and thank him for giving us the strength and understanding and knowledge that we need for every situation or circumstance. And when you do, you will see that you can expect him 
to turn your lemons into lemonades, your scars into stars, because he is ever faithful to you who puts your trust in him. The Holy Spirit inside you works through you to do those things that are challenging to your natural abilities, talents, and your strengths. The key word is through you. He does not mean in association with or alongside. God comes to live in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The living God lives in you and through you. Christ himself, the Son of God, is now your life living in you. God means that he in you is working through you. He says the same thing in Zechariah 4, 6. It's not by your might nor by your power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. God loves to specialize in working through normal people who will just believe him and do supernatural works that they can't even imagine through them. Why? Because they are dependent upon God. They know that God is always there to help them. He's always there to guide them and give them strength. And he always will. When you come across challenging circumstances and tough times, it's God who is on one side saying, come to me. The devil's on the other side saying, come to me. But the devil's the one that's challenged you with these circumstances and situations. So run to God, not to the devil. Quit leaning into your own understanding. Trust in God, and he will show himself faithful. You nearly always will feel a sense of fear when challenging circumstances and tough times come. But at the first inclination of fear, turn to God and seek his guidance and his help no matter what the situation or circumstance. For God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Spirit of God himself, by the action of his power in you, empowers you, making you ready for anything and equal to anything through the Holy Spirit and Christ in you who empowers you and infuses you with God's strength, for he makes you self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Christ becomes your sufficiency. The Holy Spirit gives to you those things that you need. He empowers you. He's the very power of God that raised Christ from the dead. So try, stop trying to do things in your own strength. I know that you do them. I've done them. And Every time, it's always harder. It's always more difficult. There's always stress and strain. So just stop right now. I can tell you from decades and decades of experience, it won't get better by you trying to do it in your own strength, in your own ability. You have to turn to God and ask God, Father, what would you have me do in this situation? Or the simplest prayer you can pray is, Holy Spirit, help me. I need help here. I've done that just laying in bed. I've done that just walking down the hall. I've done that seating in my chair, working, driving, asking the Holy Spirit, reveal to me what you'd have me to do. I don't know what to do, but I know you know what to do. Help me in this situation. In every time I have found him to be always faithful, there's never been one time that he's ever failed me or forsaken me, but he's always given me those words. And to be honest, sometimes those words were so unique, I was like, really? You want me to say that? Or really, you want me to write that back? And every time, he knew exactly what the source and what the issue was that I didn't even know because he revealed it to me. And I just thanked him for it. God is willing to do the same for you because you're his child. And because you're his child, he wants the absolute best for you. Because he wants the absolute best for you, he knows that you're depending on him is the best you can do. I mean, it's the absolute best. Because at the moment when you don't feel dependent on God is when you should be really concerned because you're walking in your own strength and you're not living by God's divine persuasion, his faith. You're depending on yourself and not God. In fact, 
you may find yourself in situations and circumstances that are so doubting and dawning that they appear to be guaranteed to fail until you remember trusting God. Rely on Him. Rely on God to whom there's nothing impossible. Then the most amazing thing happens. He steps in and helps you. And then you're just forced to cry out to Him, Lord, thank you. I needed your help. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for being there for me. Thank you for giving me that word. Thank you for showing me what I needed to do. Because God doesn't want you in despair or discontent or depressed. He wants you filled with joy and peace and being guided by him and sitting in his presence, not worrying about the future, but just enjoying the presence with him. You see, dependence on God makes you a living letter from Christ. For you become a demonstration of the Holy Spirit working in you and through you by the action of the power of God operating in and on you. The power of God speaking through you and in your words becomes a living letter to the hearts and the minds of the people that hear you. It literally stirs the minds of your hearers, most holy emotions, and then it persuades them because it's bringing gospel truths alive in them by the power of the Holy Spirit so that their faith is not in the wisdom of men or human philosophy, but in the power of God. So the truth is, God has made you in such a way so that you are dependent on him. And in your weaknesses, is the very proof that the power of God is being released in you because you recognize that it's not by my might nor by my power. It's the Holy Spirit in me doing greater for me than I can even ask, think, hope, or imagine. It's the grace of God being my sufficiency so that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's the grace of God showing up strong in my weaknesses so that he can receive the glory for my successes. So when you are being challenged with situations and circumstances in life, know this, that God has equipped you and empowered you to do far more and greater than you could ever do on your own. He makes you most sufficient in his sufficiency in Christ Jesus. So ask the Holy Spirit to help you moment by moment every day. Trust his word. Ask him to show you the way in which you should go. And then have the courage to step out and do it. Because God is always for you. He is always your helper. And he's always guiding you. He has taken you out of the kingdom of darkness and transferred you into the kingdom of the son of his love. And you are loved by God. And just as you as a good person. Whether you have children, you have a good friend, you don't want that friend hurt or that child hurt. How much more does God not want you to hurt? How much more does God want you safe? And how much more does God want you to walk next to him and walk with him in you, guiding you? Because you know, if God is doing the guiding, your path is already successful. So trust in God with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord in every situation and circumstance. Then depend on the power of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of your Father God through the Holy Spirit to take you where you could never imagine you could go before. Trust God, and he'll open doors that no man can shut, and he will show you greater and mightier things than you would have ever known if you tried to do it on your own. And Father, we thank you that you are for us, you guide us, and you direct us. We thank you that you wish above all things that we should prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. And I ask now, Father God, that you forgive us for leaning on to our own understanding, 
We just now acknowledge that you are Lord of our lives, that you sit in the supreme place in our thoughts and our minds. And we just bow our heads and our knees to you, our Father, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And we thank you for your grace and your peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that by his action at work in us, that we're able to do greater than we can even think, hope, ask, or imagine. And for that listener, Father God, who's hurting right now, who's wondering, Lord, can you help me in my situation? I pray, Father God, that by them just turning their thoughts to you, that you help them at the point of their need, no matter what that need may be, and that they would have a praise report and a testimony of the power of God alive in their life. Now, I just thank you, Father God, that you can take the words that I've spoken and apply them to the hearts and the minds of the people as you see fit so that they hear your word and hear you speaking to them directly, Holy Spirit, that they know the living God is speaking to them, that you are living big and wanting to live through them, and that they lean not ever to their own understanding, that they hear the voice of God, their Father, and the voice of Jesus, and the voice of the Holy Spirit, and the voice of the stranger they'll never follow. For you lead them, and you guide them. And it's my prayer that they will bring you glory, as I bring you glory by trusting in you with all my heart. Now, Father, help us in all the affairs of life. Give us your understanding. Give us your wisdom. And direct us with your eyes in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Until next time, remember, God loves you, I love you, and Jesus Christ is Lord, who will help you in every affair of life. Have a good day.